put him behind the wheel of a fast rolling trailer truck and on the road ahead to the person who caused it all. That's the story of The Long Road, taken from the files of John Steele, adventurer. Hello, friends. This is John Steele. I wonder how many of you have ever driven one of those big diesel trucks. If you haven't, you've probably wondered what it was like to push one of the huge jobs down the road. And I bet you many of the time you wished you had one when some crazy fool pulled out of a side road in front of you. Right? Well, this week's adventure is going to take you right into the cab of one of them during an all-night trip. A trip made by a good friend of mine, Greg Prater. And one he'll never forget because death was also riding the road that night. But I've asked him to tell you his story in person. Greg? Maybe you're one of those people, too, who always say, find out yourself before you believe anything. Investigate. Sure, it's a good theory, but in practice it don't always work out. Even investigating can give you the wrong idea. You can be misled by a lot of things. Believe me, brother, when the time comes that you find yourself getting into a spot, thinking something you don't want to, there ain't no theory going to do you any good, most likely. You're going to act just like I did. I've been working for the northern truck, and they trucked stuff from coast to coast through the northern state. But for the last six months, I've been running the night leg between Syracuse and Springfield, Mass. One night, I told the wife Betty to meet me at Sammy's, where all us drivers eat, before she went home from shopping. When I got there early, she was over in the corner talking with another driver. Didn't see me come in. Tonight's another? It's a long road, honey, and a lot can happen to Greg and Will. But... I'm going to kill him. I thought I told you about this before, Betty. Greg. Yeah, Greg. What's the matter? You'll find out. You told me to meet you Not here. Not with Art, I didn't. Now, look here. Who's was a looking butt? Greg, I've got to... Wait talk. outside, Betty. But... Wait outside. There's nothing to you. You keep out of this. You've got to listen to me, outside. Greg. Outside. Please. You heard me. You're making a scene. I'm making a scene. Yeah, and you've been... Go on. Oh. All right. But I can explain everything. What's eating you? Where would you... Stay away from my wife. Really, we're just talking until you can. Stay away from my wife. It's public here. You heard me. Who do you think you're talking to? I'm talking to you. You want to make something out of it? Uh, The place is filled with your friends. I don't need any help. Okay, big shot. Have it your way. Just remember what I'm telling you. Stay away from my wife. Someday you'll wish you hadn't acted so tough. You. You don't look at me that way. How did I marry, anyway? You don't understand. I know what's up. You don't. I've been hearing about you and Art ever since I've been working nights. There's an explanation, darling. Take your hands off me. Oh. And you have the decency to hide it right out in the open in front of all my friends. I had nothing to hide. I ought to break you in two. Listen to me. You cheap Don't. Boy. Can't stand the truth, huh? Someone's lied to you. Yeah, me. yeah. Ask John Steele. He wouldn't get mixed up in a thing like this. Ask him if you don't believe me. It ain't bad enough. I gotta worry every night about those hijackers on my job and everything. No, you gotta add to it. I'm sorry, but... I told you to stay away from heart, didn't I? Yes. Well, why didn't you? It was because I had... You had to have excitement. No. Oh, Greg. Don't. Greg. It's not the answer. You know how I feel about you. I, I, I don't know. I don't know whether. Don't you? Baby. Oh, leave you. Yeah, yeah. That's why you've got to listen to uh, me. I don't want to make you lie. You're not. Look. You go home, honey. I'd better... Shut up about him. But I go. All right, all right, baby, later. No. i got to check my truck out. We can talk it over when I get back from this trip. But that's... Greg! Oh, Greg! Oh, yeah, Mr. Steele. Your truck's ready. Okay. Mr. Steele! What yes. are you doing? I've got to get him... No, you don't. Please. We'll talk about it later. I said you're going home. Greg! Hey, Sammy! Sammy! You can't make the trip tonight, Greg. You've got to... Now, get in. I'm... Go on. Where to, mister? 60 Crescent Road. Yeah, right. Make sure she gets there. Greg. Don't worry. My wife gets that way sometimes, too. Greg, please. Don't listen to her no matter what she says. Greg. Take her there and see that she stays Greg. there. 
Here, this is all yours. Hey, hey for that, I hold to myself. You don't have to go that far. Just do as I say. Get Please a bite, right there. Hey, yeah, I'm the boss. Watching the cab go away and wondering why I gave in to her. Not that I didn't really know. Uh, better I should let it slide for the time being. We have it out when I got back. I went over to the dispatcher's office, picked up my orders and papers, went out to the loading platform to check my trailer. Check out yet, Greg? Just doing it now, Mr. Steele. Okay. I want to see you before you roll. Sure. What are you doing here, Art? Huh? Oh, oh, it's you. What are you doing to my trailer? What's it look like? Get out of there. Sure. I check my own loadings. Oh. Okay, go ahead. Couldn't put it past you to shift my load. Why'd I do that? It'd just break your heart if I swung wide on a turn and tipped over, wouldn't it? Steele asked me to help you check out. Oh, he did? Yeah, Eddie's busy. Okay. But stay out of the trailer. Yeah? You fix the load the way I want it. Get in the cab and let's start. What's your rush? Check the lights. I'm parking now. They're okay. Directional is okay. Left headlight out. Well, hit it. Probably a loose connection. Yeah, that's got it. Okay, watch it. I'll test the brakes. Okay. Okay. You can run in and punch your trip ticket while I like the trailer line. I'll do it myself, thanks. So it's yourself. I'll be back in a minute. Why? About time you got started, Greg. No, I'll be ready in a minute, Mr. Steele. Where's Art? Just left. You saw your cargo. Yeah, yeah. Where's the lot? Keep an eye out for those hijackers. Don't worry. If they have an inside man, like I think, we'll be bound to lay for this truck tonight. A bait, huh? Maybe. They won't stop me. Never have yet, you know. Yes. You're the only one of our drivers they haven't held up. Maybe they know better. Perhaps. Be careful anyway. You think I haven't got enough to do just watching my driving, huh? Sure, but it pays to be careful. People seem to think we can stop these big boys on a dime. Can't be done with 30 tons rolling fast. I don't worry about you handling driving problems. You're a worry war, John. Wouldn't you be, too? Not with me driving. <laughs> okay. I'm ready to roll. Where's Art? I don't know, and I don't care. I should be here. Huh? Art! Come on, Mr. Steele. Come on, come on. Make it snappy. Greg's ready. What's that got to do with Art? He's going with you. Going with me? Extra precautions. Did you see my name on the board? No, Mr. Steele. Two men can handle trouble better than one. Not him. Art suggested he go along. Oh, he did, huh? To protect the cargo. And you. Why, you stupid... Nothing doing, Mr. Steele. I've assigned him. I'm not going to have him around me. There's no time to argue. There's no argument to it. Art's not going with me. What's the matter, Greg? You have to go along? That's it. Boy, you... Hey, cut it out, you two. Cut it out, I said. I had to dock your boat. But I'm too late to do anything about it. Now get him over. Okay, Mr. Steele. But I hope you still got two drivers when this trip's over. should have known better than to send Art along. He was wise as much as anybody about Art and, and then Betty. It was like he was asking for murder. The two of us cooped up in a cab and traveling through long stretches of deserted country. It'd be easy to make something happen to Art along the road. The long road. Plenty of time. 
It's a nice talk. But that couldn't do anything but get me in worse trouble. Art and me didn't talk until we got past Herkimer. He started it, or it would never got started. Hey, Rose still at the tip top pin? Yeah. She's really something. Yeah. Like to have waitresses like that in all our eating places. Uh huh. She doesn't belong in one of those joints anyway. Too much class. You know what I mean? Yeah. How'd you hook her, Greg? What do you mean? She kind of goes for you. We're friends. <laughs> yeah. What are you getting at? Nothing. Then don't sound like it. Did I sound like I meant something? The gals at these joints along the road. Uh-huh. Eat there every night, you're bound to get friendly. Sure. Besides, they're out there in those places all night long. They like to get gossip from the drivers and passing news along the road. Yeah, nothing wrong with being friendly, is there? No. What are you getting at? Uh, nothing. No? Except that it seems to me you're uh, way off base, and it's uh, who talks to who stuff. Meaning? It's all right for you, but not your wife. Depends on who she's talking to. <laughs> like me? Yeah. You afraid you haven't got what it takes to hold, buddy? No. <laughs> Maybe you haven't. Why, you... Watch it. Huh? Tire blew out. No, you no. sounded like it. No tire blew, I could tell. You better stop. Probably just the car backfired. There wasn't any other car on the road. Well, it doesn't matter. Well, you better have... stop and check. I'd know it if one of my tires was flat. Might be one of the inside ones. I'd still know. Listen, if Steel finds out you chewed up a tire without stopping, he's just a kind of blab. I wouldn't have to. Oh, I'll stop if that'll satisfy you. Yeah, after you're gone half a mile. All right, pile out. Nothing on this side. Isn't over here either. I told you I knew. Don't have to check anyway. You waste time. Because you have to go a mile. Well, what's it matter? You have stopped right away. I don't need any driving lessons from you, Bud. You might as well get going. Yeah. What? Bullet hole. Oh, you crazy. Yeah? What do you get? Wasn't there when we left Syracuse? A fresh hole. You're nuts. Yeah. If I can get the slug out. Got it. Now, see for yourself. Yeah. It's like a high-powered rifle. I got a gun at home has slugs like this. Yeah, probably some hunter didn't know he was so close to the highway. Somebody was aiming at the tires. Are you making a federal case? That was a deliberate shot. Who would believe that? Maybe Steele will. It's too late now anyway. If you'd have stopped when I told you... He had them swarming all over us. We could have handled them. Let's get moving. I don't like sitting out here on this lonely road this way. You're taking over the wheel, Greg. Next town. Now I'm sleepy. What a good you did coming along. I'll pull off here. There's nobody coming. How do we get off this downgrade? This is good enough. Don't worry too much. Still safer with me driving anyway. Oh, would you? Yeah. You can have it if you want. It was your idea. It's all yours. Well? Huh? Well, come on, slide under me. Oh, Ron. Oh, you're lazy, too. I got a holder on this slope. Oh, Stupid jerk! The, the 
you all right? Of course I'm all right. I saw you fall in front of the truck. I didn't fall. No? I laid down so the truck could pass over me. Oh. I told you to hold it. Well, the air brakes failed. You stepped on the gas. That, well, that was an accident. Yeah? You know, when I tried the brakes, you wouldn't take hold right away. By that time, I, I got in the emergency. You'd be falling. You should have told me soon that you were so sleepy. It just came on me. When we were on a downhill grade. Are you trying to say that I... Maybe. Look, if I'd wanted to... Maybe do... you'd like to have seen an accident happen. That's all. Uh... It seems easier for you, wouldn't it? Why? With me out of the way. You? <laughs> You're not in my way. <laughs> What's the matter with you? <laughs> I just thought of something. Maybe I've been all wrong. Yeah, about what? About you, Betty. What do you mean? You know, I don't think you stand a chance for that. You're pretty sure of yourself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. different now than I had back at Sammy's. Walk in on something like that after all you'd been hearing would make any guy's blood boil. But driving along at night to get a chance to do a lot of thinking. It just seemed to me that if Art was that anxious to have me out of the way, he couldn't be too sure of himself with Betty. Just before we got to the rough mountains west of Massachusetts, I pulled the big truck into the tip-top inn. Art was almost asleep. He said, just bring him some coffee. Rose saw me come in the door and left one of the white line boys and rushed my way. Something funny about the way she was looking at me, though. She got it's good to see you. Think I've been gone a long I time. Oh? Huh? I gotta talk to you. Well? Alone. What a way till I get some food in me. No. And can't you tell me here? Too many people. What's the matter? The boss? Come room? on, come on up. Where will I snag a piece of cake? Huh? I've been waiting for you. Oh, take it easy. I can't. You're shaking like a leaf. Gracie called me. You mean the one at Sammy? Yeah. Oh? Something about Betty? Yeah. Um, no way. Well, what happened? What happened? Gee, I thought you weren't even going to make it here, Well, Greg. let's have it. Aren't you Anderson? Is he with you? Yeah, out in the cab. He's too sleepy. you got to ditch him, Grace. Sure would like to. you got to. It's not a life and death. But what about Betty? Uh, I don't like to tell you. Go on. They're planning on killing you, Greg. Tonight. Where'd you get that idea? Gracie. Gracie? She heard out in your wife's planet at night before you left Syracuse. I, I don't believe it. It's true. I'm uh, not Betty. You don't think Gracie spent no three bucks calling here to have me warn you if it wasn't true, do you? Well, why didn't she tell me there? She didn't think much of it, all a joke or something, you know. So she found out I was going along with you tonight. But, but, but Betty... Uh... Yeah, I didn't want to tell you that. Part. So she... Yeah. You knew what was between her and Art even... Then I'd heard it. Yeah. I thought maybe I'd have done it before I got a chance to warn you. No. Nothing happened, huh? No, just those hijackers took a shot at my tire. They shot? Yeah. Slug. Like, like, like my gun at home. Huh? I do nothing. You think Betty's the one that shot I, at you? I don't think nothing, honey. Thanks a lot for tipping me off. Hey, great. I'll take care of this. You can't go on with the truck. I gotta. But but Don't I... worry, baby. Greg? Yeah? I, uh... I'm sorry for you. About Betty, I mean. Thanks, honey. But... Well... Now that she... Yeah? Well... Now that you know how she really feels about you... What she is... Maybe... What? Maybe you'll have more interest in the tip-top than now... I know what you mean, honey. There's a chance? That's all just a chance. There's always a chance for anything. Oh, Greg. <sighs> Got a job to do now, honey. Oh, you can't go back. I'm wise now. He won't get away with nothing. He can tell the police. Couldn't prove a thing. I'll handle this my own way. I honey. wish you wouldn't. Don't worry, honey. Be careful. That's my middle name. I'll be waiting for you, Greg. Thanks. Maybe you won't want me after tonight. Thank you. 
Shaking mad. Less than half an hour ago, I'd been changing my mind about Betty. Even sure I knew her so well. Yeah. I knew her. Now. Art was still sleeping or pretending to be when I got there. I checked the tractor and trailer like a hawk, just in case Art had tried anything while I'd been in the tip top. Everything looked, so, looked okay, so I pulled out on the highway again and headed toward the mountains. It's only a couple of minutes until Art woke up. Hey, where's my coffee? I didn't get any. Why not? Because you're not going to need any. Huh? So you talked steel into coming along with me, huh? Well, uh, yeah, in a way. So you could carry out the little plan you and my wife worked on, huh? But what plan? Kill me. Who told you that? You were hurt back at Sammy's. Okay, Craig. No, you don't. Pull over and stop. Don't want to do you no good. I'll take you the point. Oh, you don't. Watch your road. Give me. There. Craig. Don't worry. Go out the window. Now, you're going to get just what you were going to give me. You won't have the chance. Only I'm going to let you sit there and sweat it out. Wonder when it's going to happen and how. Think about what you've got yourself into by being the white guy. The others will get you if I don't. Just us two now. You'll find out. I've got you sweating already, haven't I? Go on. Maybe you'll get a taste of what I've gone through. Hey, watch it. Crazy kid. Pull out in front of a truck that way. Swing over. Pull it. I'm driving. Right there. That was close. Look at what they were doing. They had a woman in the car. Uh Uh-huh. Now, where were we? Look, Greg. Yeah, yeah. They, they lied to you, whoever told you that. No, you tried twice already. Well, go on and pass. You got plenty of room. Same car. Yeah, now they want to race. It looks like they're signaling to you. You don't get me to look that way. They are. Well, let them signal. They want you to pull over. Cop? No. Hey. Yeah. Then I ain't pulling. They're cutting it. They're trying to force me over, will they? Yeah. Get them hijackers. No, there was a woman. So what? But aren't we going to catch up with one of them on the mountain? What are you going to do? Gun it. Push it for all she's got. This is a long downgrade. I'm going to take advantage of it, too. They're waiting ahead. They can eat my exhaust. They're coming. They better not try crowding me again. Brian, stop me! We're going ahead. Yeah, I know. Hey, Greg, that's your car. I saw. They're blocking the road. Too bad. Put on your brakes, Greg. The gas. Hey, Freddy's in that car. Yeah. Stop it. Get back. You'll kill them all. Yeah. You've got to stop. Let go of that wheel. Freddy, you'll run it down. Go. Greg, you're pushing. You're pushing me up. Let go of that brake. Oh. Let's out. Oh, Greg. I told you. Stop pushing me up. Let go of that brake. Oh. Let's out. Oh, Greg. So long, Freddy. Until you listen. I don't want to. Greg, you don't understand. She's right. He doesn't know what you think. Yeah. Well, look, I know what I did and I know what's coming. Greg, I asked Betty to play up the art. Yeah. Because of the hijackers. I think you could have cooked up a better story by now. She was sure it was an inside job. And I suspected art. So he asked me to try and find out. Pump him. If that was so, you wouldn't have had to keep it from me. We know that now, but we didn't then. What do you mean? We weren't sure you weren't in on it, too. 
Me? Because your truck was the only one that had never been hijacked. But I told you how I got away. They tried it. It could have been an alibi to cover yourself. I'll get it. I tried to tell you that night about Art, but you wouldn't give me a chance. Oh. He'll only ask me to... Well, he knew Art went for me. This... This all straight? Yes. I should have known. Known me better. It was just that... Well, I'd heard things... Well, it could happen to anyone, Greg. That's right. And then... You, Betty, in the hospital. I wouldn't even answer your notes. I understand. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Steele, what do they got on me? How tough is it? I don't know. I told them before he died that you pushed him out deliberately, rammed the car. Uh-huh. That makes it tough, huh? Not easy. Mm-hmm. We've got your lawyer, Greg. Thanks. Maybe when the jury hears all the evidence, they'll be lenient. Just maybe. You shouldn't think that way. We'll do all we can. I know that. Betty? Yes? We're in kind of a tough spot. I mean, I am. We? Uh-huh. Yeah. It's been a long road, honey. But I'm coming to the last turn. Yep. One more turn. Then straight road ahead. too late that circumstances are not always what they seem. Well, friends, if you like Greg's story, why not come back next week? I'll have a man who always kept away from trouble until he found himself tangled in a terrifying secret. I like to call it the face. So until next week, this is John Steele saying a life of adventure is yours for the asking, wherever you find it. Only don't look for it. It may find you. Well, so long and good hunting. John Steele Adventurer is produced by Robert Monroe, directed by Elliot Drake and written by Roy L. Dietz. Nat Poland was heard as Greg Prado. Also in our cast were Gene Tatum and Alan Stevenson. John Steele was played by Don Douglas. Musical effects were created by Doc Whipple. And your announcer is Ted Malley. All names of persons and places used in this program are fictitious. Any resemblance to names of actual persons, living or dead, is purely coincidental. Remember, next week, Mutual presents The Face, another story of suspense and action from the files of John Steele, adventurer. In its endless war against disease, particularly tuberculosis and malaria, the United Nations Children's Fund supplies medicinals such as the 20th century wonder drugs, penicillin and streptomycin. It also provides medical equipment and even bicycles for transportation. Through the fund, many countries contribute personnel, supplies, and money to help prevent the further spread of many killing diseases. Your help will enable the Children's Fund to continue this program. Send your contribution to the United Nations Children's Fund Committee, New York 16, New York. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.